Okay, uh, so uh, we will uh, uh, continue where we have uh, uh, left last time, right? And uh, I just want to tell you another important thing. Now, uh, I think we don't want now to have an extra class. What I understood, um, basically, uh, I don't think we may going to have an exam in uh, September, end or October because of the prevailing situation. So, uh, so we will continue as it is and we have enough time and we try to study more things. Right, so good news as well, and but uh, this take an opportunity just to cover during this. You know, you may be or working on roster, so try to get an advantage of um, go through your uh, all the subjects. Right, okay. So we have uh, we'll start. I think we may have some some points to be discussed under borrowers. Right, we will continue from there. And then, uh, are there any any uh, questions I gave you to answer, or I can't remember? Are there any questions, Puta? No, sir. I have a question, sir. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So, uh, can, can you tell me what's the meaning of sustainability banking, sir? Again, please. Ah, uh, sustainability banking. That means now you make yourself your uh, basically what is sustainable. Uh, Sustainable um, uh, development is basically mean you uh, make use of the present uh, resources, right? Without uh, hurting uh, those things or depleting those things. And while you're making the opportunity for you to use it in today's business activities or economic activities and ensure that those uh, resources and all these things you keep it for the next generations as well, right? So that is what you call uh, uh, what you call uh, basically a sustainable development. Uh, that there is a uh, uh, UND P also initiators in twenty. Uh, there are uh, I think around fourteen or fifteen or sixteen goals. I can't remember. Uh, establish all the financial institution as well as all the entities to achieve, all the countries to achieve in 2030, right? Uh, one, one factor is uh, they have given, right, not to damage uh, coastal, not to damage earth, like that. So accordingly, so you need to take action to reduce your carbon emissions, right? Greenhouses, gases, like that. There are targets given to achieve in 2030. Now, when this comes to uh, sustainable banking, uh, also what banks try to do, make use of these resources. Now, say for an example, energy. Now, one, one factor uh, banks are initiating uh, while changing uh, the national electric power to solar power. Banks initiatives, right? So, a lot of banks are now uh, going for, because the banks are heavy users of uh, IT. So therefore, the generated of uh, carbon dioxide and heat is too much while you are contributing to the banking uh, fraternity. So how can you remit or how can you reduce the carbon emissions or your, uh, heat? One way is you make use of and try to convert your uh, your 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 uh, all the branches possible uh, into uh, one aspect is solar power. The second, you also try to do digitalize, uh, make use of one another fact is a cashless society. So that means you're trying to do all their transactions through electronic means, one aspect. The second is paperless work. So try to reduce the paper. Now, you know, the paper, ultimately to manufacture the paper, you need to cut trees. Thereby, you protect the natural environment, right? So how then contributing to uh, um, development? And also, uh, bank, when you are going to lend to the uh, customers, you need to look at it, what you call green financing, right? You need to take into account uh, economic aspect, ESG, social aspects and governance aspect, right? And when you're granting loans also, uh, you have to give loans to the uh, green financing. That means basically, green financing means basically you are give, grant a loan 
with that loan may not use for damaging the environment. Right? So we have a green knowledge. There are a lot of things, right? If you want, I will touch a little later on as a separate subject, right? I think it's usually need to cover under. Uh, in fact, there's a question this time in survey. What is sustainable financing, right? Now, sustainable banking means you do everything uh, for uh, protect natural environment, social aspects, and governance. Okay, clear, understood. Thank you, sir. Right. So, I mean, I, if you want, I will give more, but I give a very brief nutshell. Right. This is what is national, what is uh, sustainable development, and what is sustainable financing. And also, people are talking about sustainable investing also, right? Investors are not investing the money. Uh, uh, organization, they are, they are not carrying out the sustainable development activities like that. Okay. So I will, I will uh, at the question and session answer. Uh, I will, I will give you a question. What is sustainable banking? What is sustainable uh, financing? And what is sustainable investing? All things I will briefly touch. Okay, right. Uh, I I can remember. I'll give you one question. Uh, what is the difference between? Did I answer for that? Uh, what is the difference between fixed interest rate and uh, floating interest? Those are the possible questions this year. Uh, I don't know whether I have discussed with you, right? Sure, I have discussed with any 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 students, but usually, hmm? right? Malima or oh, Malmi, no Malmi, uh, Chaturani. Okay, so doesn't matter. So I will continue from here, uh, right? Uh, I will continue from where I have left. Uh, there are few uh, we need to discuss. Uh, uh, trust receipt. Now, what do you mean by a trust receipt? Right? Now, trust receipt is a a banks and a customer. Now, once you import certain things, right? So what happened? Uh, so uh, under the ownership of bank, those now say for an example, you you want to clear some shipment. For an example, you want to clear some shipment. So bank loan as a trust, right? Receive me. Trust, Viswase, Bata, Denulabun, Puat, Kuitas. That is what you call trust receipt, right? So, what happened? The, the owner of the merchandise, the good. But the goods are not with the bank. Goods are remain with the customer, right? Who took the trust. And they try to sell merchandise. Or they may use their raw material for manufacturing purposes. Or so, what happened? Uh, they back given back to the bank, right? So this is a good arrangement. For of course, some commission charge take for that uh, trust receipt. But arrangement is what you call the trust receipt. Proceedings will uh, given to bank, right? So therefore, in that case, the buyer or I mean the user of trust receipt permitted to use the merchandise for their business activities, uh, but the bank interest is the having the ownership, right? So those are the uh, activities, right? Uh, of buyers have this protected, right? I I hope you understood, right? Okay, the okay. Then, what you call a pledge. Now, it is very famous in Sri Lanka. It's a pledge arrangement, no pledge loan, we call. Now, this is specially taking place uh, between uh, some banks are very famous for offering a pledge loan. Banks like uh, heavily are used by uh, People's Bank, right? People's Bank, uh, the, then uh, RDB, Bank of Sri Lanka, to some extent, some private banks are doing. But these pledge loans are basically uh, given to paddy people, paddy, uh, paddy cultivators or millers, right? Now, what happened? So, 
there of course you won't give the uh, commodities or uh, rice or whatever i mean the merchandise to be used by the buyer or the customer so that that the stock are kept under separate warehouse right there is a separate warehouse now the warehouse sometimes is uh, some most of the time uh, uh, some people are hiring or some people these millers are having uh, their own warehouses or sometimes some banks are having some warehouses now what's the goods are uh, basically now say rice now say uh, rice millers right uh, they want to purchase uh, paddy from farmers right so what happened they go and pay they ask the money from the uh, from the bank those money is given to the customers and they collect those paddy and keep it at a separate warehouse right warehouse now one key is having is a dual control if one key is having with the bank the other one key is having with the uh that the pleasure right now what happened there right so that's the security right then uh if the rice mill uh, owner want to take some paddy and to mill it so they will take it pay the money to bank and that amount worth and then again lock it right so that is the usual very famous in sri lanka uh, for price means right and you know there are a lot of issues are taking place you know what happened sometimes so all these you know, banks are not there you know so you, you bear, the customer is supposed to take the insurance cover and everything whatever those stores were robbed by Mila himself right and they uh, unlawfully enter to the stores and take some paddy and you know, a lot of issues on that, right? And some stores are uh, not worthwhile packing, uh, worthwhile storing, and there are a lot of issues this. But this is very famous in Sri Lanka, especially for paddy millers, right? Paddy cultivation type this is a very famous law in Sri Lanka, right? If the bank does not have a store, usually keep under the bank store but it should be kept in the stores of the borrower sometimes borrow usually rice guys are having a lot of uh, all these big uh, storages so uh, that the bank has taken an appropriate lease of the set premises bank has to take the lease right then what happened which should be specifically described in the pledge document so it's an agreement so what are the things you are going to store in the storage uh, and usually you take the insurance cover and to cover the relevant uh, stock and, and those insurance cover or but need to be taken by the customer and it has to be assigned to the bank, right? Just to get the ownership. So bank should ensure that all insurance policies are renewed annually till loan is settled. Now say it may be go for two, three years so uh, those uh, insurance has to be taken for such period or renew it to the during period till the fully loan is settled right uh, and if there is a possible depreciation in value ensure that additional security is available okay right so that is the simple method of uh, we call it pledge loan usually uh, it is very popular in sri lanka so then we call another type of loan, uh, we call is a bridge financing. We call them as a bridge financing. Now, what do you mean by a bridge? Bridge means What is bridge financing is talking about is a method of financing used to maintain liquidity while waiting for an anticipated and reasonably expected inflow of cash. Now say you, you do some sort of a businesses or some, some project or whatever you call it, then uh, you expecting some cash flow return, cash flow return uh, while the business is going on, right? So what happens, sometimes you may suddenly may not get due to certain reasons beyond his control. Uh, so the, uh, the customer need a 
sort of a cash for 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 their operating purposes so therefore banks can provide the bridge financing expecting based on the their cash flows right to fulfill their cash flows understood so that is what you call bridge financing right if there is a shortage of cash inflows so somebody will give the money right it's sort of a it's sort of a uh, working capital sometimes we call uh, loan is but we here we call it a bridge financing right okay then there's another type of loan we call them as a revolving credit now revolving credit is like a typical credit card right it's a credit that does not have a fixed number of payments in contrast to installment credits right it's it's work like a credit card revolving credit used by consumers including credit card right must you pay you take up uh, i mean the uh, usually corporate revolving credit facilities are usually this is were taken by the corporate uh, usually used to provide liquidity for a company day to day operations right revolving credit right okay now what are the features of revolving credit the borrower may use or withdraw funds up a pre approved card uh, credit limit so there is a approval limit they are given so you make it use of that much once you settle it and then again increase the credit limit right the amount of available credit decreases and increases as funds are borrowed and then repaid is typically like a credit card your credit card uh, limit will increase once you made the payment right in that amount same way uh, this revolving credit works this is specially uh, fully for corporate customers uh, for their day to day operation to fulfill their cash flows uh, fulfill their liquidity issues right okay uh, so uh, right so definitely for that uh, banks will charge an interest okay so in your commercial bank question uh, in 2019 uh, there's a question uh, asked about the uh, here what is a revolving credit line right now the revolving credit line we is sort of a credit facility granted by by a uh, to a customer to borrow up to pre pre specified limit to repay all low portions of the borrowing and reborrow as necessary until the credit line matures now credit lines be so you are maybe enter with another uh, organization or another bank we have a credit line now credit line be so certain amount pre specified limit right repay all low portions of the borrowing and reborrow as necessary until the credit line matures so they are given a period now your credit line for only for one year so during this is this one year uh, the bank need to get that facility right and that amount can you you can revolve now there is no any say for an example your credit line this year for 1 100000 rupees so you can make use of 100000 rupees right oftenly revolving during that particular period so that is what you call revolving credit line so that questions came on your commercial bank in 2019 right now you know what you mean by a credit line is a credit facility granted by your to a customer to borrow up to specified limit repay all low portions of the borrowing and reborrow as necessary until the credit line matures okay right i think you understood that part as well okay so then there is uh, another questions most of the time we have what is meant by a loan to value ratio now this is very simple one uh, you may all are aware loan to value ratio now for example we discussed this matter last week we the pertaining to the pony right can you remember pony now central bank in order to prevent the risk of gold prices has come down uh, so banks usually take their own initiatives or sometimes 
central bank has given uh, instructions to the uh, commercial banks uh, okay suppose the gold value is uh, say 100000 rupees per pound so uh, so you need to give maximum of uh, 65000 60% of the gold value so that means how much loan you can give to the customer suppose your gold value is 100000 65000 so there is a margin of 35% right if the gold price also come down still you have a margin of 35000 so we assume the gold price won't come down from 100000 to 65000 right but there are occasions we had we the gold price has come down by we have given more loan value so sometime even now uh some private companies private finance companies are giving around 70 80 85 90% 90% against the value of the gold so that be the gold price come down suddenly so say 90000 so gold price come to 80000 who is going to pay you a loan nobody is going to pay right so there is a loan to value ratio b the amount you granted against the value of something we call loan to value now this is not only that and now the present situation uh, central bank also have given some restriction to facilitate certain loans to vehicles now vehicle now import uh, uh, 100% no but there are some instances where uh, if uh, somebody is uh, uh, buy a loan uh, buy a take a uh, auto loan for the uh, for 1 million say 5 million car so how much you can give that bank decide or central bank give direction you can give to buy a loan of maximum of 50% of the car value like that that is what you call loan to value ratio now if you put it in terms by term used by lenders to express the ratio of a loan to the value of the asset purchase we call ltv ratio right now ltv ratio used by banks uh, as a uh, money as a, a controlling measure right uh, we can say is a rules and regulation under the uh, credit granting uh, central bank has the power right certain power under vested in the uh, monetary act central bank can decide the uh, ltv ratio right so ltv ratio then mean loan amount divided by the value of the collateral used for the loan now this question asked in 2019 march again in the commercial banking but it doesn't mean it cannot be asked by the uh, our subject as well because why it is related to the customer right now say uh, there is a questions comes like this now customer of your bank want to purchase a uh, say for an example a three wheeler three wheeler right and he has visited the david peeris and he negotiate the price the price of the uh, three wheeler is going to be around 5 lakhs or 1 million for example right and customer uh, requesting a uh, 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 loan of uh, 1 million to purchase the same right now how can you explain customer so there of course you have to explain the customer right according to the central bank direction according to the ltv ratio the loan to value ratio uh, we have banks has restricted granting loan to the same amount of the purchase value of your asset in this asset is c call uh, going to be three wheeler that is the well, that is the collateral you use for the loan so then so according to the central bank guidance you we can give only 50% for loan so that be so you can grant maximum of 50 500000 provided that the customer also have a the payment capacity he has to prove himself he can pay 
500,000 uh, can take loan uh, of 500,000. Right? I hope you understood that part as well. Right? Having understood that, so there are some instances, right? What is what we call uh, if a customer or especially for a big company like Marga, Maga institutions, they were taken a, a big uh, project from the government uh, for construct a big uh, road or some complex, right? Whatever. So in that case, maybe he may not have, he asked for around huge amount of money as a loan. So one particular bank or one particular institution, uh, because due to various reasons, due to uh, accommodation, so one customer cannot do so much of loan by bank according to the central bank uh, directions, you know, uh, because uh, we want to uh, diversify your risk. Therefore, a bank cannot give one customer a certain percentage of uh, capital value. Say, for an example, 30%. I think you will be going to learn all this. 33%, 30% can, can give to one customer. That is what you call single borrow exposure. We will going to discuss uh, under uh, customer protections and customer laws and practices, right? So that is called single borrow exposure. So there's a limit imposed by bank himself, itself or maybe some directions given by the central bank. So for that, or, or otherwise, we bank, particular, particular bank may not have money to purchase or money to offer that loan. So then what happened? Few banks or few financial institutions together are for a loan. That means, say, uh, somebody has to be arranged. Somebody has to be initiated to arrange. Okay, say, Bank of Ceylon work, uh, uh, approached by Marga Institution to get a 500 million loan. Suppose banks of Ceylon, so they say they don't have a money to give 500,000 rupees, a uh, million rupees. So they talk to People's Bank. They talk to Sampan. They talk to NSP. Say, okay, then they negotiated, okay, well, how People's Bank can you put 500, uh, 200,000, uh, 200 million? Can Sampath put 100? Can uh, NSP put 100? And then Bank of Ceylon put 100? And then you come up with 500 million rupees. So this type of loan, the loan facility you may suggest to cooperate customer who need a large sum of money is called syndicated bank loan, right? So what do you mean by a syndicated bank loan? In this case, this is the loan offered by a group of banks or several banks together to a single borrower. We call them as a syndicated bank loan, right? One time I can remember there's a question asked, what do you mean by a syndicated bank loan? Now I think you understood what is syndicated bank loan. If a particular one bank or one institution not in the position to grant a loan to one customer who required more value custom, more loan value, so banks, several banks, a group of banks join together and give that money to a single borrower. So that type of loan we call syndicated bank loan. Right? Okay. So then we move into another important thing that is what you call import loans. Import loans. So most of the time you may get uh, in your question number eight, usually in your question number eight, the last question of your syllabus paper. Uh, so they ask you to write short notes. Short notes, right? That's the one typical type of question. So there they will ask to explain a different type of loans. I can remember one year they asked important loans, import loans. One time they asked, uh, uh, I, I told you last time, auto loans likewise, right? Important loans. Right. Okay. Now, if a question comes like, if you, at least you need to write five points, they are to get earned five points, right? Usually your question is five marks, no? 
right? So at least you need to input from five point to earn five marks, right? Okay, uh, that is how the paper mark is there. If you write one point one mark, sometimes if you put three points two marks like that, or oh, one each for one like that, examiner will give, right? Okay, so if your questions comes like that, what are you going to write? Granted to facilitate financing of imported goods and services, right? So you are granting loan uh, to facilitate the financing of imported goods and services, right? Usually those loans, remember import loans are short term, maybe maximum of six months, right? 180 days. So important loans won't give more than that. Usually a short term loan, right? Third, those are the things you need to look at what purposes is giving, what is the tenor, right? And what are the usual securities you're going to give, right? Granted for settlement underlining import transaction, such as retirement of letter of credit, uh, uh, delivery acceptance bills like that. Now, so you need to prove that, right? You can't just get out for import loans, right? You need to prove the purpose for that you need to show some document, right? Then only bank initiated the import loan. So one fact, one thing you can show to the customer, to the bank is a letter of credit or um, DS bill, right? So documentary acceptance bill. So something, there are some documents come so to prove that. So therefore uh, you must show this one and uh, with the customers, uh, uh, invoice or whatever, right? Don't settle out the sales of the goods as services import. Usually, how you are going to pay, uh, like pledge loans and like uh, remember, is this, these are not a pledge or anything, right? This is a, a basically you are going giving with some uh, with or without the uh, without a uh, mortgage uh, without the security, right? Now settle out of a sales of a goods or services import, right? So granted with a specified limit of the client. Now import loans amount maybe depend from customer to customer. So these are the five important forms you need to write when the examiner may ask you what you mean by your import loans or write short notes. Okay, clear? Right. But specific features are there, amount, period, uh, under what circumstances are you are giving, how you are going to recover your loans and things like that you need to take into account. Right. Now, uh, there's a question. Now, can anybody answer for this? Lending, this is a customer client management, question paper, 2019 March, question number one. Fifth question, two mark. Lending product available for corporate for their CapEx investment would be. CapEx investment would be. Right. Now, I think I, we, I gave you a short note to, to write about certain loan. Can anybody give me an answer for this? Right? Can anyone give me answer for this? Right? Please. Can anyone give me answer for this? Sean? Uh, set me. Set me. What's the answer? Tarani? Tarukshi? I need a. You are there. Kalinga? Uh, Kalinga. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Now, any any more answers? Any more answers? Term law. Term law. Any more? So I got two answers now. Term law and overdraft. Right. Term law. Uh -huh. Okay. What is Malmi? What is the answer? Uh, term law. Mal term law. Okay. Right. Now, good. So I need your cooperation also, right? That the mangi thora over the budi gira ni thani. There, so for that, I am giving you that. Didi ba the hai thora, what are take count? Right. Okay. 
now you need, i can i can remember i give you some uh, some uh, uh, short notes about the answer no right now what do you mean by capex capex is a short term right capex mean capital expenditure right now if you buy say for example for machine if you want to purchase a machine right machine usually high cost clear right machine is usually high cost you need more time to pay your loan you take more time to settle your loans suppose if you have a some problem with your working capital requirement you need day to day operation activity what do you need what type of loan you need suppose if you need a, a quick loan for overdraft overdraft good right now i want to just to mention that students who gave the answer for overdraft usually put that the overdraft are taken for short term this capex on the issue i think you not got the correct what do you mean by capex capex mean capital expenditure capital expenditure items are usually high value so therefore say million 3 million 5 million 6 million you can't pay immediately that amount no right so therefore what happen you need to go for more long term period now like a fd right fd you deposit for 3 4 years or two years is a long uh, deposit we call term deposits likewise if you're going to take a loan to pay in a long time right uh, we call them as a term loan especially to buy a capital expenditure items. you uh, need more time to settle your loan you go for term loan so can you tell me another type of term loan we have learned for some other purposes not for capital expenditure purposes can anybody name another term loan what we have law uh, uh, what we have learned uh, not for capit capex investment but for other purposes can anybody tell me another type of a term loan we learn already for some other purposes housing loan housing loan exactly exactly that is also you are going to pay in a longer term right i think you understood now uh, what is the capital expenditure investment right okay right the term loan is the answer right okay now now we may suppose now i we we came to a good point right now suppose nobody is going to give the money uh to buy a vehicle or maybe to purchase a asset or maybe a machinery or big vehicle or something like that so nobody is going to give a loan but you want to use it so then we can have that facilities called leasing facility we can go for leasing facility right now leasing is the purchase of an asset mostly building machinery and vehicles by a leasing finance company with retain the ownership with the asset owner or maybe the lesser and the, the, the lesser mean the bank usually and then allowing the client or the lessee to use the asset for certain period of time right now what happened uh leasing mean is basically if you really look at it suppose if you want to buy uh, some machines or even for car you go for leasing arrangement right then they take the uh, your vehicle as a uh, as a security uh, so you have to agree with the leasing company or the lesser certain amount you can pay during what period so lesser that mean the leasing company give you the vehicle for you to use it now you don't want to tie up the money with the, your capital with the purchasing this one thing is you don't want to 
tied up the money otherwise if you don't have the money but still you want to use the vehicle so you as a lessee you enter with the contract with the lesser is that called leasing agreement leasing agreement okay so three years time i'm going to settle uh, uh i'm going to pay three years after three years that vehicle is belong to lessee right so but what is the advantage use the asset by the lessee even the ownership is not with them right for a period of free fee or a rent after completions of the leasing period as paid in appropriate uh, uh, repayments so the lessee have on the ownership of the yes. now you we heard about there are seizures if these people are not pay the vehicle proper properly and uh, seizures will take the vehicle and go what the kind is oy marode gila ne the salary the tama oy police kattiye tama inne aavi kattiye tama e wata gahalli e gollu gila wahane paare yana ona nawattala bahinne gila kaara karra yana ai ehema karan ara agreed una fee eka rent eka nathi una so that is the of course is a legal right but they you have to do in a such a manner right so that is a leasing uh, facility okay so uh, there are two type of uh, uh, two type of uh, leasing arrangement we call one is a financial leasing other one is a operating leasing now what is the difference between finance leasing and operating leasing the financial leasing is a long term and ownership of the asset transfer to the lessee at the end of the period at the end of the period but whereas the whereas the uh, whereas the operating lease is usually short term and the lessee retains all the right of the ownership at all times while they are using then you have to return the uh, we, uh, whatever the uh, machines and things like that to the uh, respective organization right okay if i ask you questions like this uh if you talk uh, talk about leasing right what are the advantage of uh leasing facilities to customers right what are the advantages of customer uh, about having a leasing facility so why people are going for leasing facility can use the asset yeah that mean facilitate the uh, use the asset which can be paid over a period of time so but he can own the vehicle also uh, on the uh, asset also right but while you're using and after repayment you can own the vehicle also that's the important thing you can own as well as you can use suppose if you don't have a money uh, to purchase at once right that's a customer's advantage right uh, so uh, what is the advantage for uh, for uh, leasing company or a bank uh, what is the advantage to the financial institution usually the you are getting the rental usually the financial leasing is a uh, little bit little costly and you charge certain high amount of as a rent or fees right then risk risk may if you are not pay what happen there may be a a cease there is a pop, uh, popularly called possible cease by the lesser if payments is made not in time right and what is the risk to the financial institution credit risk uh, of the uh, customer not pay their installments and things like that i can remember one time there is a question asked by our paper uh, 
uh, what is financial lease, what is leasing, and what are the advantages and disadvantages and risk to the bank and a customer. Okay? Right. So always try to learn on that. Then there is another arrangement, higher purchase agreement. Purchaser agrees to pay for a good or part of a percentage over a number of months. Now, in this method, remember, no. so you, yeah. Uh, excuse okay. me, sir. Go ahead. Uh, so, can you give an yeah. example for the operating lease? Operating lease, suppose, Puta, now, uh, take an example. Uh, now, harvesting time, right? Suppose, uh, for an example, right? Take a harvesting uh, tractor or machine, right? You go for shorter period till such time you uh, take the harvest and just you give back again to the owner. Or maybe a high value or maybe a big tractor or something, right? Uh, you need to say, for an example, um, you, are a, uh, you are a real estate organization who, who uh, building houses and things like that. You will take an some uh, 500 acres of land to construct houses or maybe to sell it or block and sell it. So you want to know what happened, what you need now. So you have a people, so you want to borrow big tractors to, you know, or uh, clean the entire thing. You go for three months higher, uh, three months leasing for big, uh, all these things and use it and give back again to the uh, that particular organization. Usually, usually the ownership is not comes under the uh, short period and not pass the ownership to the user. But whereas the financial leasing, comparatively is a longer time, right? You get the ownership of the items as well. Clear? Okay, Buddha? Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Okay. Now we look at the higher purchase, although make the same thing, but here makes the installment. Now, usually under higher purchase, you have to pay one third or two third or something in upfront. Right? Now, if you really look at it, the differences between leasing and finances, uh, you look at the ownership and look at the rental payment depreciations and the duration. Now, ownership lies with the lesser, right? The lessee has the right to use the equipment and does not have option to purchase. But here, but he also can, now, if of operating list, you can give back again the, uh, back the uh, items if you don't want, right? But in higher purchase, he has the option to purchase. That's another important thing. Now, rental payment, the lease, uh, lease rental cover the cost of using an assets, right? That you incorporate that. But installment is inclusive of the financial amount and the interest part, right? So depreciation is claimed as an expense in the books of the lesser. Depreciation is claimed allowed to the higher. You know, the depreciation cost has to be taken by higher, right? So duration for a longer duration, but higher purchase, more shorter duration, cheap asset like hiring a car, machinery will take for less is going, going for thing. But here under lease here, we have specifically mentioned the uh, operating lease, right? So I don't think you will ask to that extent, but remember all these things as well. Right. Then we go for another type of loans is what you call the refinance loan. Refinance loan. Now, refinance loan are mainly granted to businesses which conform to certain criteria based on funding agencies or the government. Now, most of the refinance loans are given by who? Central bank. Okay? Now, there is a, a funding agency or maybe the grant. Now, whatever uh, we call uh, Saubhagya and all these things, uh, even for uh, certain loans given by during this COVID-19, as call them as a refinance loans, no? right? Now, what happened here? Okay. Now, you suppose you are uh, 
a farmer, some example, right? You are a farmer. So you want to, good thing. Now, if you want to buy, uh, manufacture, example, I'm just quoting you, right? Example, example, you want to uh, manufacture uh, uh, organic fertilizer. Organic fertilizer. That is the thought of the town today, you know, organic fertilizer. So you are a you are an organization of come somebody who wants to manufacture organic fertilizer. Now there is a government or maybe a, some funding agency. They say they want to protect uh, natural environment. They they said, okay, we'll give you money, right? To banks. Say 500 million rupees, right? It may be distributed among the banks in Sri Lanka. Say 100 million for one bank, like that. Say example, five banks. Now, banks, now say, you, your bank, suppose you have a HNB, will you for an example? So you were granted funding agency, 100 million. Now those uh, money need to be given to people who who manufacturing organic fertilizer. Now, whatever, you give the loans to the uh, uh, to the customer at a reasonable rate, very low rate, right? Now, and then customer uh, manufacture uh, organic fertilizer at a low rate. And if you pay back settle and the money, the difference, uh, will given by the uh, funding agency, right? So that this type of loan given by banks to customer, it will sponsored by another organization. We call them as uh, refinance loans. Again, a refinance. Again, a nayak de dunnava taayak nayak hamvelo. Eka thariyete mukatwa gede. Apni kya ne reinsurance wagi. Then mama insurance company ya, mama customer ta insure ka gun no. They know. They know, mang eka insure ka rata wat e wagi ita mai refinance ki ane loan ne ka du. Nampa se e loan ne ka refinance ka rama ta wat ka ti. That means refinance a loan wala specific characteristic ti ro. E loan ne ka gun no ni that particular purposes. Right? And definitely you need to at a very low rate funding agency are refinanced by the government or the funding agency at a low rate and as a result of customer too will be given these facilities at very attractive rates. Adoing Hambena Mudal funding agency got Nikang de Nasali. Egolo they know Apita Aduata. A to cut a Sali Aduata de Nasali Apita de Nova a Funding agents, the rapid handling charges, aviotica, gun no me one. Right. So now we move into the another type of uh, credit. We call uh, packing credit, or sometimes we call packing loan. Uh, I think you are not given uh, in writing, right? So please uh, write down when I explain to you what is packing. Now, this is the financial assistance. This is the type of financial assistance given by the bank. Okay, first you are, try to understand, right? I will dictate that uh, uh, to you what to need to write. So, uh, credit uh, packing credit or packing loans. This is the type of financial assistance given by the bank. The enabling company to buy the goods to be exported, to be exported, right? Ekani then apitamu wada monohari. I am export karan na badu onang netta packing wale ta washanang e gatte export karan na badu wale ta pack karan na saliyan wala. E sandha denu la bana loan wale ta pikiro packing loan no packing credit loan. Right, so you can write. This is the law. This is the type of financial assistance. Uh, this is the type of financial assistance given by the bank. This is the type of financial assistance given by the bank. This is the so type of financial assistance given by the bank to enable the company. 
to enable the customer or company to buy the goods to buy the goods to be exported to be exported now what have export karan no export kirima sada api dena sahaya we like import lo right right api import karanna dena wage packing credit ut dena packing loan ut dena ap export kirima sada likewise the likewise uh, it's a uh, uh, import loan is a short term and remember so uh, usually the packing loans also short term loan right also short term loan and packing credit facility can be given for pre shipment packing credit or post shipment packing credit both way you can give post shipment or post shipment pre shipment or post shipment packing credit for purposes you can give packing credit that's enough more than enough for your packing credit okay now i am giving you another question about the commercial banking your 2019 paper okay now student can can think what we have learned up to now type of loans we have granted we have got a term loan house loan import loan uh, credit uh, packing credit loan then housing loan pony leasing facilities higher purchases pledge loan margin trading facilities uh, the syndicated loan oh my goodness then term loans right so eki meki noki godak dewal api ekena gatta right and what is the answer for this what is not a facility what is not a facility so why that by a bank or retail working capital loan working capital loan why why because you look at it all things are given to the retail customer no residential property mortgage loan mean house loan that is not a business so that, that's not a business right so advance against goals articles also get pawning no that is covered for a retail customer term loan to purchase a vehicle or sometimes we call auto loan also we call them as a retail <coughs> sorry customer so working capital is usually are given for sort of a business customer or a corporate customer right remember you understood now right so answer therefore working capital law good very good right answer is that okay now with this so we are come to a end of we are come to an end of what end of borrowers right and now this is a very interesting one what we are going to discuss with you now i'll give you more questions on this right i'll give you more questions on this we're going to talk about the payment services or payment services customers right now if you before i just going for uh, to discuss this matter uh, give a brief what is payment service providers now these are the people who facilitate an effective and efficient payment and settlement process locally and internationally these are the people who provide that customers and you need to remember one thing right payment systems payment and settlement system or payment system in any country play an important role it facilitates the financial system stability it facilitate the growth of the economy right so if you any country which you having a very efficient and payment settlement process at a low cost right is a fundamental facility or to develop the country or a growth of the country right so therefore payment and uh, settlement process or payment system in a particular particular country play an important role in economic development right that's right 
Okay, now the people who are giving the facility, we call them as a payment service providers. Usually most of them are uh, online, real-time basis. Why? To expedite the financial transaction. Because the more if you expedite the financial transaction, so more businesses are taking place, right? Then therefore economy is dry. So good payment service system reduce the transaction cost. Now if you really look at it from uh, our payments initiatives, if you really go to the history, can anybody tell me which year the Sri Lankan first ATM established? This is an examiner want, don't want to uh, ask question, right? Definitely I don't think. When the first ATM machine installed in Sri Lanka, which year? Can anybody tell me? Any guesses? Huh? ATM in Sri Lanka? 1990? Uh, just before that. Uh, first one is... 1986. 1986. 1986. 1986. 1986. Right? Okay. Then from 1986, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, a clearing system. Uh, we started in 1988. And then the first credit card introduced in Sri Lanka, which year? I'm just talking about some landmark only for payment services areas right first credit card as you say 1980 in the atm and first credit card launched in sri lanka in 1989 right 1989 then 1994 the shift right was introduced and also along with slips so i will explain to you all these shift and slips and shift and everything right so uh, when is the first debit card introduced in sri lanka which year it's somewhere in 1997, right? 1997. And then uh, when the internet business come into the scene, which year? Around two decades now, right? This is 1999, the first internet business came. And then, uh, you know, the Lanka Clear, the guy who was involving in the payment, Systems in Sri Lanka under the brand of Lanka Pay initiated in 2002, right? 2002, not so long, right? Just 20 years ago, right? Basically, then RTGS started in 2003, and then uh, Lanka Secure 2004, and then uh, so we had the Act, new Act called Payment and Settlement in 2005, right? And then uh, then uh, you see the uh, 2015, another uh, payment uh, methods came, what is called, we call the weather, but SEPT, right? And then what is the latest 2018 initiated by uh, Central Bank of Sri Lanka, but now only it's more familiar. What is that? Do you want QR, QR code, good. Now I just tell you uh, the some some history about uh, how these payment structure comes, but for your understanding only, right? So I don't think the examiner will ask your question, but you need to know all these things. Now my my subject is customers. You no, know, so there are some organizations who provide. Uh, there are some systems and organization who provide payment services now now if you really look at the evolutions about the payment system right from barter system to cash and money order and checks right from uh, those are we call uh, the postal instrument and this goes to the cards and core card is going to for internet and internet for mobile and now wearables you have the phones and all right so this is how and the payments methodology is going to uh, evolve right okay now the payment service customer be the people who obtain those services we call payment service customers like the bank who have customers who deposit the money is called as a deposit customers 
a customer who borrow money from the bank, we call borrowers. Customers who invest the money in financial instrument, we call financial investors. Likewise, the customers who obtain the services from financial services providers, or we call them as payment service customers. Right, so they use a different type of financial uh, instruments. Right, I know I just give you a brief introduction. Okay, now what is a payment system? What is a payment system? Right, now you may have a different different meaning. Now, what is payment system? I told you the payment system play at important role in your organ uh, in your country's economic activities right now payment system is you can say according to the bis bis means the bank international settlement very simply uh, they say it is a set of payment instrument set of payment instruments and also it is a procedures and rules for the transfer of funds between or among the participants in the entity operating the arra arrangement, right? It's a money move here and there, form of instrument. There is a procedure to allow, follow, and there's a rules governing of transfer of money. It's called payment, right? Payment uh, system. If the, if the examiner asks from you, what are payment uh, settlement infrastructure? Infrastructure, right? Now, payment uh, settlement, uh, payment, uh, uh, payment uh, and settlement infrastructure means is comprised of what? System used for purpose of clearing, setting, recording, payments and securities, transactions. Right, so infrastructure we is the system which facilitate to do all these things. It's called infrastructure uh, of payment infrastructure for just for your uh, understand. Right? Okay. If I ask you again, what is the importance of payment sound payment system? Now I told you at very beginning. Payment system play an important role, right? And economy growth. What are the central bank uh, objective? Can anybody idea? You have learned up to now central bank under survey the matter commercial bank. What are the objective of a central bank? Can anybody price tell me? Price huh? stability and. Price price stability stability and financial system stability very good very good so those are the main objective of a central bank for that matter for any central bank what are price uh, stability and financial system stability now in order to have the uh, better insurance the established or stable financial system stability the financial uh, intermediaries need to play engaging transactions no financially uh, institution as an intermediary involving in financial transaction so what financial system stability be to be there you must have an efficient effective market infrastructure right now in order to do that right which facilitate to have a better financial system stability to have a better payment system so that is one of the reason why payment system uh, play an important role for an, any economy so that's something else right i'm just talking to you right so okay so then we there are some rules and regulation what is the law governing the payment systems in sri lanka I am going to touch that one in the, my uh, credit, my uh, law, that part. For Can anybody tell me what is the uh, Sri Lankan payment system governed, regulated by which, uh, which, uh, which act? Which act? What is the banking act? 
माई गुड आज तक नवा हुआ कि नवा है तब आगे नवा हुआ कि नवा है व्हाट इज द बैंकिंग एक्ट थर्टी ऑफ नाइनटीन एटी एट साउ वी ऑल आर वर्किंग ऑन दैट लाइक वाइज व्हाट इज द प्रिवेलिंग गवर्निंग एक्ट व्हिच सुपरवाइज एंड रेगुलेट पेमेंट सिस्टम इज श्रीलंका राइट ऑफकोर्स वी आर गो अंडर मॉनिटरी एक्ट 58 of 1949 that act powers entrusted to cbsl to monitor and supervise payment system so that act which we call payment and settlement system act number 5 number 28 of 2005 right now certain things you need to know as a banker what is the act governing the payment system in sri lanka act number 28 of 2005 how you call same matak avate karanne pa payment and settlement payment ga sell karala thebe payment and settlement system act right okay now now we are dealing with puta we are dealing with now uh, what are other instruments we are dealing we are dealing with now payment cards we are dealing with mobile uh, payments methods and all under that act that is under payment and settlement system act 20 2005 has given power to have another law what you call payment cards and mobile payment system regulation of one of 2013 to cover the mobile payment aspect also right because after 2005 we started the payment settlement system so during that time we don't have a mobile payment system subsequently they introduced to monitor and regulate the mobile payments they introduced under the same act the act we call payment cards and mobile payment system regulation number 1 of 2017 so therefore for entire covering the payment system we have a two act right and it's maybe uh, maybe good for your law also but it's good for your commercial bank and it's good for your uh, service right okay so uh, right so now you learn about what is payment system right next point now uh now for that uh, there may be a lot of guideline a uh, lot of circulars issues under those regulation by payment okay now uh, again i am ask you a small question what is the department in central bank of sri lanka who monitor uh, who who uh, monitor who uh, work under the purview of that regulation that division was established in 2002 in sri lanka in the uh, in the central bank of sri lanka uh, how you call that payment and settlement divisions of central bank okay are a central bank payment and settlement divisions of central bank okay right now now another point what are the actions taken by uh, this uh, central bank uh, for payments uh, to have a smooth functioning of payments settlement uh, system in sri lanka what action central bank taken ratatula we hold the payment sa bera mokada berum kirima the oh payment and settlement system ekak like, इंटरनेशनल स्टेटर्स right and then uh, encourage all these payments uh, uh, support providers to initiative of new things that is how 
fintech come into the scenes, the QR code and things like that. And then, and also the most important thing is to regulate, but the regulate the, uh, the fee system. Now, some organization charge different amounts, no? So, the one of the important thing in the central banks uh, is to control the fee and charge, right? They will tell you, okay, this is the maximum you can charge from the customers if you are providing this type of service. Okay, we have a questions on that we will discuss last. Okay, now coming back again to the payment instrument. So, you can do uh payments with two ways what are the ways one way is cash what is the alternative non-cash payment now today through the payment system what we are trying to do we are trying to promote non-cash payments facilities that is why we want to uh, we want to have a cashless society right okay so if the examiner asks from you what are the non-cash payment instruments available in Sri Lanka? A customers can do transaction. Customer can do payments. What's the answer? Right? Okay, this is the answer. What are the methods available? Checks, postal instruments. That mean we discussed earlier, right? Postal instruments mean what? Like money orders, check uh, money orders, and post now. Those things are not there, but still there are some things are still work. Then payment cards. Then payment cards. What are the ones? Mobile phone based payment mechanisms. Mobile phones. Internet based payment system. And QR code payment systems. Right? So you can have non-cash payment instruments. It's still like a name. Five of them will have what or not have the own. Okay, right. Now I'll go one by one. So I have a time now. So I don't want to miss you any questions. Now I have keep on telling you for the students who are doing with me for clients management, always have an advantage of facilitating my lecturing to answer your core subjects that is commercial banking survey as well right okay right. now you know what are the non-cash payments instrument clear right now i ask from you arising from this can i just uh, ask from you one small question what is payment card? Right? What is a payment card? How you give me an answer? Right? What is a payment card? Right? Now, what is a payment instrument? Payment instrument means payment instrument is any instrument enabling the holder to transfer funds. That is financial instrument. Right? We discuss type of financial instrument. Now I have asked from you, what is a payment card? Now we discuss the type of payment instrument is called a payment card. What is a financial? What is a payment card? Can anybody tell me? Now you can say, it is a debit card, credit card, short card, and like that. No, no. What is the definition? What is a payment card? Can anybody give me an answer for that? What is a payment card? Okay. Payment card, you can write anything. Right? Any card. Somebody can. It's a technical definition. Right? Payment card is a card. Plastic card. Or plate. Plate also earlier we had plate card, but now, but oh, a book, a coupon book, or oh, any other device, or oh, uh, part of the payment system. Okay, uh, right. I, I'm just defining. Okay, good. Uh, right. What is a payment card? Any card 
plate, Cooper book, or other device, any other device, right? Any other device, including a code, including which need to be including a code, COD, or any other means. I'm just giving a technical definition, right? Or any other means of access of access to an account through use of your card or any other gadget must have a code which can be used to access to your account stored value or credit stored value or credit your account may be credit account or money account stored account stored value or credit or credit that may be used for that may be used for time to time that may be used to time to time to obtain to obtain to obtain or to make payments to make payments now when you once you completed the definition, now read that will you. What payment card is talk about? Is it any card? Or maybe it's a plate. Or maybe a coupon book. Or any other device. That device is including a code. Or any other means. Now, what is today we are... Uh, what are the things we have incorporated to car today? What are the things we have incorporated to car today? If you want to withdraw or take, how you identify your card? There are two methods. One method is already now uh, MasterCard say you can't use this, but there are still people are using. What is that card? What is What is the method? You're using how to identify your card. Come on, magnetic strip or what is the present one? Alternative NFC. one? Huh? NFC? No, no, no. Card decay. EMV card. chip. Chips. Right now, now chip. magnetic chip. 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 Right? Earlier we had magnetic strips. Now, uh, can anyone, oh, don't worry, I will, actually I will repeat again, right? Uh, then uh, uh, payment card, you must have a, some sort of a code or any other means to access to your account, right? You can access when you an account again. This account again, Samara will have to add our Thalli Tampat will have to end up with one. This is the end up with one Thalli. Even at that credit. So when it comes to a credit card, you have the credit. This is not the amount, not the stored money, but it's a credit. Or maybe some money in the debit card or stored card. There's some money is lying in your account. So then you make use of that facility for time to time to obtain money from the card or to make payments. So what is the definition? Right, the definition, any card, a or plate, or if you forget, just forget about, you say any card, anything, but this is a technical definition. Any card, plate, coupon book, or any other device. You can say car, plate, plastic, uh, plate, plastic card, or any other devices if you want, including a code, code including a COD code or any other means any other means of access to an account stored value or credit that may be used for time to time obtain money or do some purchase or some payments so that is a technical card uh, that is a technical definition of a Payment cards. Now, what are the type of credit? Uh, what are the type of payment uh, cards? 
Can anybody tell me what are the type of payment cards? Right? What are the type of payment cards? Come on. Credit card. Credit card, debit card, and stored value card. Those are the three type of card available in Sri Lanka. Now I'll give you a small exercise. What is the compare and contrast these three cards? Compare and contrast these three cards. Can anybody do? Now we have already done credit and debit, right? Okay. Divide into three. So what are the common feature about all these things? All these three are payment cards. Can be used to withdraw money or make some payments to buy items for merchants or whatever. Right. These are common things too. Right. Now what is debit card? The holders to make a purchase or withdraw cash, right? From, from their account. And that is immediately account to your credit uh, debited to your account. That is a debit card. Credit card, you can make purchase. You can withdraw money up to certain limit within your credit limit. That is a credit. Right? In Sri Lanka, we had around 14 commercial banks issued credit cards and three finance companies issued credit cards. Right? In debit cards, we had 80 licensed commercial bank in Sri Lanka issue debit cards and 11 finance companies. But don't worry about all these things. Just to understand, right? 11 finance companies are issued debit cards. So nobody asked from me what is stored card. No? What is a stored card? Can anybody tell me what is stored card? Kalinga, what is stored card? We should top up first before payment. Yeah. How how you if you ask to now you need to compare these three now? Okay, I just explained to you, right? Now stored card is a payment card, a type of payment card, right? Where the monetary value is already stored in the card. Stored Debit card also same, right? But this is not an account, but the card itself have the money, right? This is a payment card where the monetary value, now the debit card, what, once you do the transaction, the message go to your respective bank, from that bank maybe deduct the amount you use it. But here, it's not go to the bank, for the card itself will get deducted the amount, the use amount. Right now, the stored card where the monetary value is already stored in the card, right? Stored in the card, right? Can you tell me what are the type of when we use the stored card? What is the uh, circumstances you are using card, a uh, stored card? Api wedi pura ma bawita karan ni mono wagi, then api credit card dega bawita karan, api debit card dega bawita karan, api stored card dega habati sima bawita karan. What purposes we are using a stored card? Sometimes we call transit card also. Right? Sometimes we call what? A travel card. Is a travel card. Right? To be used. And when you are go abroad or sometimes you take that tra travel card, right? Uh, and sometimes we call gift card. Now I can remember, I went to uh, uh, yes, Achala, kyaan mukhad wagi prasne? Tell me what's your question, Achala? Yeah, prepaid card. That's correct. Huh? Achala, you want to ask something? As raise a hand for what? What purpose put Achana Mukadoni Makinghana Achana Lakchani? You want to ask a question for me? Manarti no Achala. Right. 
Theru Nadu. Are okay. A store Next card is. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. The travel cards. Do you use any other Lanka? according to the information what I am having, uh, there are uh, uh, 10 licensed uh, commercial banks are issuing, like a free paid card, right? But for purpose, usually are using for traveling purposes, right? Now, uh, commonly used in countries where it is difficult to obtain a debit card or credit card due to economic reasons, or maybe uh, when you want to travel, you want to ensure that your money. Now, it's not open because cartel uh, horeng atta ganna unat ganna pulwagin de that that store amount no. Ata hita na wagi credit card de hal debit card de ka one million. Right, when you go for countries like certain countries, <laughs> right? fraud skim card Right? Okay. Right? It don't know what the My goodness, okay, you are right. It don't have a store card they are useful. You are losing only the amount in the store dump card. Right? Now I can tell you. Uh, I can tell you a story when I went abroad for some business purpose in the bank uh, with one of the senior persons uh, to whom I uh, have a more contacts with uh, all these uh, uh, South, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Dubai and all these countries, right? Uh, uh, he himself and myself also we got some card for one of his friends because he has done a lot of services to the uh, all the Saudi and uh, Dubai banks. He worked for 30 years uh, during the bad time at uh, all this Dubai. Okay. So then what happened? So he he got a card from one of his friends. Uh, I also got a, I also got the Saruni or my cake of product unmute kara. Mute kara. Right? Okay. Right. Ito mo na mo ka doon eh. Ito na mata thamu na kaan diga. Mamandala may mo ka digil. It's a gift. So, for us to use while we enter there. So, they have a stored card. Can be given on those countries as a gift card also. You can make use of while you are there. You want to buy something, you can make use of. Eke na api tigam. So there are instances we can use this store card, right? For traveling purposes or as a gift card. It's sort of a prepaid card, right? That means telephone uh, mobile card, right? Store card. Sri Lanka, we had 10 uh, uh, use for online payments, right? And, and uh, minimize the uh, adverse impact of fraud and things like that. Okay, right. I think I have given more on that. Harry, somebody has given the correct answer also here. Good. Uh, then uh, going back again to the different type of methods, right? So we will touch all these thing methods later on. Then I will be moving to uh, the next slide, right? Next slide. I will explain to you uh, other mobile phone based payments cards and internet based payments and things like that. Let me look at mobile phone card. What is mobile money? This is also not in your handout. Please try to write uh, what is the mobile money. Now we are discussing about the payments methods, right? Mobile money. What do you mean when the examiner asks you, what do you mobile money? Mobile money means is a mobile payment system based on accounts held by a mobile operator, right? And accessible from subscribers' mobile phone. The conversions of cash into the electronic value, right? And keep it. So all transactions are authorized and recorded in a real time using what? SMSs. Right? So these are we call mobile money. So we have a two types of mobile money. We have a 
two types of mobile in Sri Lanka. Two categories. One, customer account based mobile payments and mobile phone based e money system. Please write this. I forget to give you this. Please write these things, right? What do you mean by a mobile money? Right now, it is associated with this. You see, Sri Lanka non cash payment instruments, checks, postal instrument, payment cards. Now, we just completed what? Payment cards. Then we have another non cash payment system we call mobile phone based payment system. Right? We have two types custom account based mobile payments and mobile phone based e money system. Right? Then what is mobile money? It's a mobile payment system used by mobile operators. Right? There are two types in Sri Lanka custom account based mobile payments and mobile phone based e money system. The second, what we call mobile banking. We call second one, we usually call them as a mobile banking. Right? Mobile phone based e money means a mobile banking. Sorry, uh, custom account based mobile payments, we call them as mobile phone banking. So what is custom account based mobile payments? Custom account based mobile payment system provide the facility to customers of licensed service providers to access their accounts through their mobile phones. Right? The second one, famous one, mobile phone based e money system. Mobile phone based e money systems issue monetary value upon the receipt of funds and store electronically for the purpose of using for payments. Can you give me an example for mobile phone based e money system in Sri Lanka? Very famous one. Two Easy finance, Easy Cash and M-Cash. M -cash. Uh, Very good. Right. right. Okay. You can just put it. Example, uh, Easy Cash and uh, Easy Cash and M-Cash. Good. Right. Clear now? I have written down. Or you can copy later on. I know later on never happened. Maybe they will do the that. to the wine. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Now this is I am going to touch with you very thoroughly, very comprehensively. I want to cover. I I guarantee you, if you get a questions on payment system, either my subject or survey or commercial banking, you can answer once we complete this entire. Maybe we continue maybe the next week as well. So we don't have a Wednesday class. Remember, we have a time. So next Wednesday, we will continue. And I will send you a new tune. We are going to start. The new area is the customer protections, laws, practices, and everything. It's very interesting. We are, we are going to learn about the customer charter, uh, uh, ombudsman, uh, what are the laws, uh, things like that. Okay. Now you know what is mobile money. So if you really look at it in your part, we learn what is mobile phone based payment systems. Right? Okay. Now, having understood about the mobile payments, right? So there are some questions came this year. Right? Okay. So now there are circulars issued by central bank, right? For how much of maximum money you can transfer through all these e-money systems like, like this e-money systems, like mobile phone based e-system. What is the maximum values? There's a circular on that. Now, before you move into this circular, I will give you this question. This is your last examination. As for the payment and settlement system circular, number 8 of 2019, this is a very 
uh, this question can be answered only a person who are involving in banking in a bank. So they are otherwise difficult to answer, right? Right. The individual stored value, right? Individual stored value limit applicable to e-money accounts with NS, KYC. Okay, forget about you, right? What is the value can have a maximum in an e-money account? Again, easy cash, hurry, M cash, well, a Uprimatia Ganda Puluangana Kiel. Can anybody tell me? This is the question this year. Right? Likewise, we will last. A hundred thousand. Uh, not that. Not that. See? Now, now, we, we are now just pay. How much? Now, likewise, five thousand. Huh? How much? Right. Okay. Now you, now you have an idea, no? For mobile payments, so lah. Arna kuchhera upper na thali transfer karna pulwa. Right. Tiya karna pulwa na store karna. Right. Now look at this circular. What did I give you? copy paste right okay now keywords right other keywords now what's the answer now thousand uh -uh. fifty thousand right the answer is fifty thousand okay answer is fifty thousand right and this is a new area the way the question is going to ask that is why I want to explain to you in little details, right? So because now the payment settlements these days due to the COVID are playing an important role, ne puta. So therefore, we have to pay more attention. Look, there will be a lot of question is asking when you pay by that settlement methods, right? So we are going to discuss QR code and then we are going to discuss about uh, other methods, right? So don't worry. So I will teach you everything, right? Now you understood. Mobile one, right? Then, so yeah, excuse me, I have yeah. a doubt. Yeah, tell me, Buddha. So, shall I ask? Sure, sure, of course. So, in which category the travel card will come? Which dialogue presents few years ago? Uh, it will is it, it, it will come under banking category or a personal category, which we use no, in it, the it, private it, buses? Ah, no, no, that is also very good. <laughs> so, that is goes as a uh now uh, uh that is comes under puta i will tell you we are going to discuss uh, that one is uh, later on right okay i will explain to you that is come little later i will uh, we are not still discuss that point okay right i will come back to you on that okay bus and all right Okay. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. I will come back to you, right? Don't worry. You don't get mixed used to this. It, I will explain to you later on with that. I'm going to touch on that also, right? For the time being, okay, just sir. excuse me, right? Okay. Now, okay, sir, we are you. going to discuss. There are two types of payment systems in Sri Lanka. Right? There are two types of electronic payment systems in Sri Lanka. One is we call large value payment system. Other one we call retail payment system, right? Now, what are the two types of electronic payment systems in Sri Lanka? Large value and retail payment system. So what are the large value payment systems we call is real time cross settlement systems, RTGS. What are the retail payment systems? You have a items how many around seven retail payment systems in sri lanka one check image and truncation system card based payment system interbank payment systems like slips your mobile banking or telebanking internet banking e-money schemes like mobile things and common electric fund transaction right 
Okay, then the examiner asks from you, now you say, what are the payments instruments? Likewise, they can ask you, what are the retail payment systems in Sri Lanka? Name five or five or six retail payment system in Sri Lanka. Then you need to write one of these things. Right? Okay. Now I'll give you a question. It may be a type of exam question before I proceed from here. Right? Okay. Then our question is, what are the differences between, what are the differences between large value payment system and a retail value payment system? What are the differences between large value payment system and retail payment system. Can you divide it into two? Right? Okay. Now let me explain now. Okay. Can you write something? Give me your answer. So, because we, we may go a little slow, don't worry. Right? Doesn't matter. Usually I go quickly all these things, but I thought of going a little slow this time. The examiner asks you, what are the large value payment system and what are the retail payment uh, retail value payment system? Right. Now tell me what is what are you going to run? first you put the large value payment system, other one retail value payment system. Okay. What is the basis you categorize this? Two payment system. Can anybody tell me what is the basis? How you cooperate and retail? Okay, okay, one next bit. Rather than that, okay, that is a one value category. of payment. Type a uh, value of payment. Okay, so then you can say the first one under the large value, high value payment, high value payment, and low value payment. What is the large value payment you approximately for uh, under comes under the large value payment system? What is the maximum amount? What is the uh, sorry uh, amount and what is the retail payment maximum amount? What is the retail payment uh, maximum amount? It may be vary, right? It may be vary. You say now e money scheme fifty thousand. But you can go certain other retail payment system. You can go up to what? And large value payment system means from what? You can say, okay, one should say, usually uh, high value payment and relatively low value payment. The what is the maximum value you can go under retail payment system? Five million. 5 million, whereas the large value system usually is above 5 million. Okay, good. Above 5 million. Right. Then, as somebody discussed, retail payment is a more targeted towards individual payments, where the large value payments is go for corporate level payments. Right. Okay. Simple definitions, no? Simple differences. Right. Now we learn three. Okay. Some more. How about the cost? How about the cost? Right? Usually, large value payment system charge relatively high commissions or charge. Retail payment system usually charge how much? Less than, less amount. Okay, now what is the amount? Real time gross settlement. What is the maximum you can charge? That is why central bank is there. I told you, remember the monitor? So you can't use more charges. Real time gross settlement. How much? Any guesses? Any guesses? There may be a question this time. There is a reason for examiner to ask you that question. How much? 
usually earlier we had around maximum of 1000 rupees 1000 rupees some banks charge 750 per transaction right now because of in order to promote this transaction due to this covid and the central bank has given recent uh, circular usually the maximum is how much for real time gross settlement how much any guesses 400 rupees 400 rupees right 400 the retail payment system certain are less charge but can go up to maximum of how much Come on, how much? Retail payment system, you can charge maximum of how much? 100 rupees. 100 rupees. Now, it's, sometimes it's less than that. 30 rupees, 50 rupees, but uh, for safety you charge 100 rupees. Okay, good. Right. Okay. Now, you learned so many things, right? Okay. What are the other things? Then you make a barrel and the bullion, right? High value payment systems are operated under what components or uh, what you call uh, uh, through payment? Uh, what are the payment instrument? RTGS, whereas the retail payment you have some more you can write. Okay, another difference. Right. Okay, what else? Now remember, now listen to me carefully, right? Now, now this large value payments, these large value payments are considered as, uh, considers as systematically important payment systems. We call SIPs, C-I-P-S. These payments, these payments that mean the large value payments are usually considered as what systematically important payment system. Systematically important payment system. Right? SIPs. Since a failure of a such system. Suppose the failure of a such systems like RTG a system could potentially endanger the operations of the entire financial system. That is why we call them as a, impo a systematically important payment system. Right. What I'm going to put at the retail payment system? Right. You can write at the retail payment system. These payments considered, or the retail payment system, considered to be socially important system. Those are how we call systematically important system. Where are the retail payment systems called a socially important system due to its due to its widespread use in the economy. Widespread use in the economy. So therefore, retail payment systems are socially important system where the large value payment systems we call them as systematically important system clear understood now right okay so now we learn a lot right Arda. so if there is a possibility of the examiner can ask on this now the what is the difference between retail payment system last system very broadly very broadly right okay then, what are you going to discuss? Then we are going to discuss all these things under retail payment systems. 
all things we are going to learn under retail payment systems. Okay. Now we take one by one. Take one. What you call slips. Right? Slip system. Now slips is what you call the introduce. Now which one you think the introduce first? Slips or RTGS? Can anybody remember which one introduced first to Sri Lanka? Whether slips or RTGS? Come on, come on. Slips. Huh? Slips, slips first introduced. RTGS came, for, uh, came later on, right? Okay. Now, slips Sri Lanka interbank payment system. The moment the uh, abbreviation something comes, you need to put always what is slip stand for. Slips usually, uh, slips is usually uh, interbank Sri Lanka interbank payment system. Is an online interbank electronic fund transfer. Now remember, when the slips introduce, it is not online, right? It is not online, so therefore he get T plus one or two, right? But in 2010, slips also make it online. So now we have our online interbank electronic fund transfer system. How many cycle we have for slips? Right? You have a two cycle, right? So therefore slips are low value payments up to how much? Maximum of 5 million. Initiated in Sri Lanka in 1994. Right? So you have settled same. That means T plus 0. Right? Right? With C, uh, T plus 0 mean the same day. Right? Now, what are the mostly what occasions we use slips in Sri Lanka? Example of UC heavily slips for salary payments, salary payments and utility bill settlement, right? Salary and utility pay settlement. Now, why I'm telling you with some interest, with some things in my mind, right? Okay, always try to learn. So, what are the charges for slips? Now, I have given you 50. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes. Huh? Is that correct? 50 rupees, sir. Your bank is charging 50 rupees? Yes, rupees. sir. Sure? Yeah. Sure. You sleep. Yes, it's, it's 25. 25 uh, slips and for third. Fifty is thirty. Thirty, no. Earlier, yes, we had fifty rupees, right? We had fifty rupees. Now, with that, I told you RTGS also we had thousand rupees. Remember, thousand rupees. Now that also reduced to how much? I told you, maximum of how much? Come on, what is the amount full charge you? Seven fifty. No, no, no. Seven fifty. No, no. Maximum four hundred. Four hundred rupees. Likewise, in the same circular, they reduce the slips maximum bank can charge from 50 to 30. So now presently charge you cut 50 and put 30. So you can less charge any amount, but max is the maximum amount you charge. Right. Okay. So Excuse why? Me, they, sir. Yeah. So okay, is ahead. that charge? 30 or 25 for the slips now? I don't know. It has to reduce to 25. I am not sure on that, but to my knowledge, it is 30. No, but no. Any other... I don't. I'm yeah, just... It is 30. 
Yeah, 30. but you can okay. touch 25. The maximum can go 30. But anyhow, I will relook at it. I don't know whether there's a new circular comes. I also uh, not aware, honestly. But up to now, to my is 30. I would, right? Is my max is charging 30 also, right? Or well, that is a standard amount. So you can charge less than that. That is a maximum amount, right? Okay. Now that is because of this COVID decisions only people to encourage this reduce, right? Okay. Anyhow, I, I'll come back to you on this, right? 30 rupees. Right. So you think how much of uh, how much of uh, uh, value and transactions averagely taking place for SIPs in Sri Lanka? Right? You think how much? It's around 30,000 830 million altogether around 37,000 million transaction taking place to the slips 2020. Maybe uh, this year as well. 2020 is around 37,000. What is the value you think? 2.2 trillion value of transaction are took uh, in 2020. I just give you just for understanding what is the volume of transaction and the value of transaction taking place to the SIP systems, right? And then we are going to discuss right theft, and then we are going to discuss RTGS. Right now, I think now three o'clock. No, is that true? Right? You like to continue? We well, I'm doing it at home. But you may have other classes, right? Okay. Clear now, up to now, what we have learned. So what we are going to discuss next week or maybe the next Sunday, the balance, other methods, right? Very interesting. Then I'm going to ask from you, compare clips, set, RTG. This is the way to remember. And then we are going to discuss some more points uh, like what is QR method, what is just FA, what is LPOPP, LPOPP. Now somebody talk about uh, some cards, right? Okay, so then NCS. Have you heard about these things, right? Okay, and what is uh, common ATM switch? And what is, uh, uh, then what is shared ATM, what is common mobile uh, switch, and what is the direct debit, what is, uh, like there are so many things, right? You're going to learn and next week, okay? So we can complete next week and we can start a new area next week, okay? I hope you understood today uh, and I keep on telling you it's a very this is good for pay more attention to this area so this may be benefited your commercial banking as well as survey there will be a lot of overlapping right lot of overlapping uh, of these things okay right so be careful uh, be at home as possible and then we will uh, discuss the other points uh, next uh, week. Uh, if you have any problem, so please uh, free to ask me next uh, next uh, week. Uh, if you have any doubt, please go through. Uh, and uh, so we don't have a class on Wednesday, right? Okay, right. So have a nice weekend.